Mr. Bertolini. The European Union and uh, Council of Europe recently promoted the second phase of its uh, horizontal facility program for the Western Balkans and Turkey 2019-2022, estimated at 41 million euros. How much of this funding will support projects in North Macedonia? Well, uh, first of all, um, as you mentioned, this is the second phase. And actually, I was part of a team in Brussels who conceived the, the, the whole of horizontal facility. So, four years ago, we started this facility. So, the first phase was of 25 million euros, and now the second phase, because we saw the efficiency and the effectiveness of this operation, is enlarged to 41 million euros. All these funds are divided into, into three main components. The three years action plans, which is the most important component, in which each country has a, an envelope. And this is around 4 million euros for North Macedonia. Uh, then there is the regional projects in which uh, every country participates. And this is an additional, it's difficult to quantify because there are different actions there. And the third component, which is an expert coordination mechanism, which are experts uh, uh, available on demand on specific legislation uh, issues or, for instance, uh, uh, two years ago we started here with uh, some of these actions for the State Election Commission for improving the, the overall election and law and other actions. So, 4 million euro are the national envelopes for the second phase, divided into five different actions and then there are part of the regional and part of the expert coordination mechanism. The program is focused on four key topics, uh, ensuring justice, fighting against corruption and economic crime, combating discrimination and protecting the rights of vulnerable groups and freedom of expression and freedom of the media. Uh, given that the program is tailored to suit each country's uh, specific needs, what issues should North Macedonia focus on to align itself with the uh, Council of Europe and the European Union standards? Well, the three years action plans, which I mentioned to you is the first and biggest component, includes different actions for North Macedonia in particular. We are talking about uh, the action for uh, uh, legal aid, you know that in May this year a new law on legal aid was approved. We already support this new law. Now is to support the implementation. So assistance will be given to the regional offices of the Minister of Justice and also to the bar associations in order to implement better the law and to have legal aid assistance to people who are without any possibility to have legal assistance. This is the first action. Then there is fight against corruption and uh, uh, money crime. So in this area uh, we work with uh, the uh, State Commission for Prevention of, of Corruption, we work with the anti-money laundering uh, offices, the Financial Intelligence Office, in order to strengthen their capacity to deal with these crimes. And of course, <coughs> this is in response to the Moneval and Greco recommendations, which are particular recommendations in these areas. Then we work also in the prisons. And there, the focus is on uh, the management and staff of the prisons. How do they recognize radicalizations and, and counter-terrorism? so that these, these crimes, these people are identified and properly treated, and then also improving the rights of the, of, of the prisoners for mental health and health in general. So these are the areas we work on on, uh, on the prisons, including this uh, uh, external um, oversight mechanism of how police is dealing with prisoners. So this is an area that is under, under focus. We are going to work again on human beings trafficking, so focusing on labor trafficking and child. 
assisting the institutions that are dealing with these victims. So not only in prevention, but also in taking care of the victims. And very, very important as well, we will have a first action on anti-discrimination, uh, helping the Commission for Anti-Discrimination, helping the Ombudsman, being Minister of Labour and Social Policy in fighting the anti-discrimination, in particular LGBTI and the hate speech. So there will be this uh, kind of a hate, no hate speech ambassadors uh, initiative and it will be fostered because I think that also a public awareness campaign will be, will be done uh, uh, for protecting these uh, uh, this, uh, categories. Now, these are the areas we work in the, in, the in the three years action plans and on top of it there are also regional initiatives uh, in which there are the parliaments involved, in which there are also the justice reforms uh, observation involved. So these are the areas we will work in particular. What should we expect in the area of ensuring justice? And uh, what is your take on public prosecution law that has uh, not yet been adopted? Well, as I said, in justice we had uh, assistance to the reform of justice. We have, but in this, in this original facility, these are the area. Training, capacity, academy of judges and prosecutors will be, will be strengthened. There will be more and more training for that. But then, then we, we also intervene very much in the freedom of expression. So in that area, we will work with academy of judges and prosecutors. With, uh, we are working with also a media association, media regulator, in all what are concerned the human rights, uh, case law of a, a court, International Court for Human Rights. So these are the areas we work in. So in about, about uh, freedom of expression and freedom of media. Uh, those sections are actually connected with the, the media in Macedonia. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, as I said, uh, this is a continuation of an action that we are already supporting, which is called JUFREX, uh, and is assistance to freedom of expression and freedom of media. In particular, there is a training and, and capacity building of judges and prosecutors now also in this case, uh, police and parliamentarians will be added. In all the so-called media freedom cases, legal cases, that are uh, uh, presented in front of the International Court for Human Rights in Strasbourg. So I think all this will be in attention of the second phase, and this is something we are already doing, so it, it will be continued. The country has been often criti criticized for its penitentiary system of overcrowded prisons with terrible conditions. What kind of help will our country receive to improve this situation in the near future? The, the prisons in the country, as you said, are, are in bad need of assistance in terms of physical infrastructure, but also in terms of uh, how to deal with prisoners. This is why I, I told you that already this action will include the specific activities towards uh, uh, radicalization in prisons so that uh, uh, the management of the prisons could identify and properly treat the radicalized persons. Then it will help also in the health and mental health area. But what we also do, and I think it's very important to acknowledge, is that we are still we are already uh, investing IPA funds in buildings. For instance, Vitola prisons is being reconstructed with IPA funds. In Idrisovo, we are, in the past, we also supported the, the Council of Europe Bank in order to support new buildings in, in Idrisovo, in which the situation is quite uh, uh, dramatic. And indeed, uh, I've been there and I, and I witnessed with my eyes the situation. But also, in Idrisovo, we are constructing a courtroom. For the difficult cases, the courtroom will be within the premises of the prison, so that there is no possibility for the 
big criminals to escape or to, or to find their way out uh, between uh, uh, the trial and the sentence. But we are also investing in a reservoir with new buildings. Indeed, we put in the next IPA program, IPA 2020, for Justin, so we have a particular action there. And ongoing, we have important activities for the support of a probation service, which is the alternative. So in order not to have many prisoners crowding in the prisons itself, it could be, they could be outside in specific services, and will be controlled and monitored by uh, the system. So prisons, unfortunately, is one of, of a big uh, uh, consumption of IPA funds because I think that still the country needs to develop more. N do not forget also the, uh, uh, the new strategy on prisons, and we are also supported by, uh, by this program. What is your opinion about the reforms in the country overall regarding the recommendations from the uh, European Commission report and uh, re Priva report. The country has, has done a lot of reforms and the path of the reforms is very good. You do not have another country in this region which has done so much in the last two, three years. Uh, still, still there are reforms to be, to be completed but in most of the cases, you have to acknowledge what we always said. The country is ready to be opening the negotiation. Then, if you look at the legislation, many, many laws have been approved. What is lacking is the, the implementation, which uh, normally requires funds and people. And this is bringing me to the biggest problem of North Macedonia, is the human resources. The public sector does not have enough capacity in terms of skills and commitment. So there are not so many people working in the public administration which are devoted to work. And the few of them who are working a lot, they are overloaded. So this is the problem number one of North Macedonia, is how to get public service actually working efficiently. Thank you, Mr. Bertolini. You're welcome.